How's it going, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Dirty B Headlines, episode number nine, part one, right here on No Holds Barred Wrestling Podcast. Your Canadian wrestling podcast that talks about the Dirty B and No Holds Barred on anything we say, pun intended. You can follow the podcast on Twitter at No Holds Barred WP. You can follow myself at Real Kyle Masters, and you can follow my co host at Corporate Cappy on Twitter as well. If you want to follow us on Instagram, No Holds Barred WP is where you can find us if you're into that sort of Instagram thing. If you want to listen to us on the go, Spreaker, iTunes, and Stitcher Radio is where you can find us. Spreaker is a glorious podcast app that is available for all Android and Apple devices. It's free to download, free to make a profile, and you can listen to all previous episodes of the podcast. You can chat with us live when we are live on the air. If you want to watch any video versions of the podcast, youtube.com slash NHBWR is where you can find that. Hit that subscribe button, that bell icon for all upload updates. You can find 2K content, unboxings, and again, like I said, all video versions of the podcast i am your host as always the self-proclaimed greatest host kyle masters and um guys welcome to episode nine there will be headlines part number one as you remember last week i announced that i'll be splitting these up into parts over the weekend just so i don't do all the news all in one show and just it's just jam-packed and i have more time to process stuff and it's easier on you guys and for you listeners out there and uh, easier on me so i'm not sitting here talking alone for an hour by myself um so yeah, uh, welcome to WWE Headlines. If you guys don't know what that is, is where I go over any news and rumors throughout the week in the WWE. And again, when I go over the rumors, it's just rumors, so take it with a grain of salt. I am not a news source. I just read what I read on the internet and give you guys my opinion. And I want to know your opinions out there, so leave a comment down in the YouTube section or tweet at us at NoHoldsBardWP. So one second here. Oh, i got to take a drink of water. I'm not going to do any editing. I don't like doing all that editing stuff. You know, I, I, a lot of people give that gripe, or a lot of people are, oh, why don't you just edit that out? I don't, I don't feel the need to, you know, it's just a quick sip of water. But anyways, guys, uh, right before we start the show, we got a couple of things to go over. One is uh, our boys uh, Wrestle Rumble. Um, they have a pick em contest. I'm gonna, if you're watching the video version of the podcast, it'll be right on the screen for you. Um, they have a ref, uh, wrestling pick em contest, and they have a wrestling pick em uh site so go check him out www.com or www.wrestlerumble.com and you can also follow him on twitter at wrestle rumble so go give him a follow on there they are also sponsored by pro wrestling tees and they got their own merch on there if you guys don't know what pro wrestling tees is it is a pro wrestling uh, t-shirt and merchandise website they have a lot of great designs if you're into the bullet club they got that bullet club and they also have wrestle rumble merch on there so go check him out and go enter this awesome pick em contest um which you're doing this Sunday for Elimination Chamber. And again, if you're watching the video version of the podcast, I've just transitioned it for you. Uh, Russell, they're doing Elimination Chamber. Pick them. You can see there, first place takes home $500 cash. Uh, second place, $100. And a shirt from Collar and Elbow, the wrestling brand. And third to fifth place will get $100 each. And in sixth to tenth place, a $25 gift card to Pro Wrestling Tees. And they also got the MVP awards there on the right. If you are in the MVP category and you've been doing the pickums all along, and it doesn't take much to get into that MVP category. So enter now. One entry, I believe, is $10. Two entry or three entries is 25 And then there are, are more entries for more of a higher price. So do what you got to do. If you feel confident with one entry, pick one entry. If you guys uh, feel uh, less confident and want to go for more, there's options to pick more. So again, um, WrestleRumble.com or you go on Twitter and follow them at WrestleRumble. You can get through the link there. So go check them out and give them a follow. And speaking of collar and elbow, so if you're watching the video version of this podcast, look on the screen. If not, uh, if you're listening, listen up. Collar and elbow, the wrestling brand, is a fantastic wrestling brand, ladies and gentlemen. Um, they are was founded on a traditional of value traditional values of professional wrestling two entities working together to create a product intent to connect with people on an emotional level a, sim, a symbolic relationship where one cannot flourish without the other we strike to create a product that embodies our passion for professional wrestling expressed through street fashion they are a huge supporter of local wrestling and the founder and owner of this company is none other than former WWE star Al Snow and today, just for you guys, I have a special coupon code if you want to go and order a shirt. I've been told that these are very, very comfortable shirts, and they have very, very comfortable hoodies. On behalf of at JumboRef123 on Twitter, thank you very much for the coupon code. So guys, on checkout, you're going to use the coupon code JUMBO, and you're going to save 
on your order. So there's nothing wrong with that and saving 10% and saving a little bit of money. So go check them out, guys. The Collar and Elbow Wrestling brand. I love their shirts. I'm going to actually order one myself. And I'm going to be using that promo code. So go check them out and save yourself 10% on checkout. And last but not least, our boys at Extreme Wrestling Shirts, WWE Doc Extreme Wrestling Shirt, WWE. W, I said WWE. <laughs> www.extremewrestlingshirts.com. They specialize in pro wrestling and MMA apparel with over 50,000 t shirts, sweatshirts, costumes, DVDs, and pendants in stock. And the best part of it all, it is free shipping to anywhere in the US and Canada. If you are somewhere in the rest of the world, you have to buy three items. But I'm telling you right now, you're probably going to want to buy eight when you see this website. And after that, it'll be free. So free shipping to USA and Canada. All you have to do is pay for the product itself. And then Go check them out, guys. Extreme Wrestling Shirts. I won one of their contests and received a free shirt, and I've ordered multiple shirts off this website. I can definitely vouch for you that um, they do. They have an awesome website with uh, authentic Dirty B merch, just not with the authentic patch of the bomb that you're used to if you ordered a Dirty B shop shirt. But I'm telling you right now, after wearing their shirts, I'm probably just going to stick to this website. They feel a lot more comfortable. Uh, they're a looser fit, which is great because they're to be shopping. It's always like you got to order one one uh, size above, and you never get that right fit. I, I feel so, and and you don't have to. You save on duties, you save on taxes, you save on everything when you're you're ordering from Extreme Wrestling shirts. So go check them out, guys. So. All three of those things, guys, please go check them out. All the links will be down in the description on the YouTube version of the podcast if you guys want any links. Or head on over to, again, Twitter, follow at WrestleRumble, Collar and Elbow, and Extreme Wrestling Shirts. So now that i got the plugs out of the way, uh, we can get into the news, I believe. That's it. Yep, we get into the news. There wasn't really a massive heading for Part 1 this week. I usually have like a big heading that I start with. And that's basically like the thumbnail for the video. I really didn't have one. I'm still going to decide what I'm going to do in the thumbnail. Um, so I'm just going to read off the news that I have for part one. Hopefully there's a bigger story for tomorrow. I'm hoping something comes out. If not, it's just going to be the same thing. There's going to be a bunch of news stories today. I have seven for part one. I do have already a couple for tomorrow. I think I have four or five. So stay tuned for that. So let's just get right into it, guys, into the news. And we'll start off with the first one. Uh, the WWE Raw ratings and the third hour drop from this week. Uh, WWE tried something different with the latest episode of Monday Night Raw this past Monday. How successful the decision to devote the first two hours to a seven-man gauntlet match was still or was will depend on who you ask and what criteria they're judging on. But number-wise, we can tell you it's delivered. So more viewers tuned in than the previous week, 3.10 million, and most of the ones who watched the first hour stuck around for the second. So overall this week, Raw drew 3.28 million viewers, uh, a pair of eyes on President's Day. The U.S. holiday was the reason for the delay in the release of the viewership data for this week. Uh, the figures come from the following breakdown. Hour 1 had 3.52 million people. Hour 2 had 3.51. But then Hour 3 just dips right down. I wonder why. You, you sit there and you wonder why the third hour drops down. Then drop down all the way to 2.82. I know that's still a lot, considering it is million, but that's a pretty significant drop from 3.52 you had in the first hour. Like you wanted to continue that throughout the entire show. You want 3.52 to stay with you until the very end of the show. But what they produced in that second hour is just like why we even watch. Like you see the first thing that happened after the gauntlet match, and you're like, all right, so we're back to square one. We start off with a really good gauntlet match that almost lasts two hours, and it's Seth Rollins, a big Iron Man, getting a standing ovation, and he beat. Roman Reigns and John Cena in the same night, but then then you kind of just drop off and you go back to the lazy creative we're used to week after week on Monday Night Raw. So the rest of this article, that was good enough to deliver WWE in USA to the biggest audience and the best demographic shared amongst 18 to 49-year-olds among cable originals on the night. It was not good news for the women who made the bulk of the third hour. The final 60 minutes have routinely seen dropped. Uh, like, you sit there and you're like, I bet you they're sitting there going, wow, man, it's definitely the woman's fault. No, it's how you've booked the women's division. We said on the lowdown show, you guys have not done a good job booking this women's division. It's literally all over the place. It's it's just as unorganized as Monday Night or on SmackDown, where you're not even using everybody. They're trying to use everyone on Raw, and it just feels crammed and rushed, and nothing's making sense. Um, you're having Asuka face Nia Jax, for whatever reason, and the reason... They're giving us is Nia Jax can get into the WrestleMania match if she beats Asuka. So her streak's on the line. And there's a lot of eyes pointing that Asuka might actually lose to Nia Jax. And I wouldn't doubt it. You think about last year when uh, Charlotte's streak ended at Fastlane. 
when Bailey beat her. Like, they're not afraid to end streaks for whatever reason. So I have a sick feeling in my stomach that it might happen. So we'll see what happens. Um, seems the television audience was worn out by the gauntlet as the fans in Phoenix Talking Stick Resort Arena. Next week will be the fallout from the Elimination Chamber pay-per-view and the official start to the road to WrestleMania 34 for the Raw brand. Which do you think will make up for the like for the likely lack of the two-hour match? Whew. Uh, they better step up if they're going to continue a boost of 3.52 to this week. They're going to have to do something, maybe announce somewhere on the weekend that they're they're going to open Raw with something or maybe like in the mid show of the elimination chamber they're going to announce something or maybe midday on Monday. It's got to be big. You got to get the eyes on Monday night raw. You're going to just going to get a significant drop from the week before. So we'll see what happens. Um again, they would have better viewership in that third hour if they produced better television. Again, 3 hours is long enough to I, I you don't want to sit through 3 hours of television for wrestling, man. It's just to me it's way too long. If you're not going to produce good storylines and why even bother? SmackDown has the right idea. They just they do, they do too many commercial breaks and there's they they really kind of rush everything. 2 hours is great. I mean, you see what NXT does on a weekly basis. They're like basically 1 hour and they can fit everything they need to on one hour television and still produce good television. You don't need to be 3 hours to be a flagship show and be the one to say, "Okay, we're 3 hours." That means we're the best and we're going to produce the better storylines and fuck everybody else. No, that's not how it works. So hopefully that the, the rumors earlier of Fox buying uh, Dare to Be or buying the television rights and moving Rob maybe back to two hours in 2019. I hope that comes through because three hours is literally too much. Um, move on to the next bit of news here. Uh, Jeff Jarrett and the WWE Hall of Fame. So there's a lot of mixed reactions with this. Uh, I've read over Twitter. Um, in pro wrestling business, latest the latest never say never moment has happened. Jeff Jarrett was announced as a member of the WWE Hall of Fame class for 2018 on this past Monday Night Raw. How did it happen? Who knows if this is 100% true, so take this with a grain of salt. Because it is unsourced report from a publication in Sports Illustrated that despite their well-known name, despite their well-known name, has a record that. Okay, this article, was, I should have read this article before I posted it. Despite the well-known name uh, of, of Sports Illustrated, it has a record that's not better than any other direct screen or rumor monger when it comes to these things. Okay, But according to Justin Barrasso's latest, Triple H pushed for Jarrett to be brought back into the WWE fold. Uh, the story mentions Double J and Triple H's mutual friends, uh, Kevin Nash and Scott Hall as people who could have possibly helped b- bridge the gap and makes a similar, a similarly inclu- inconclusive observation about a possible link between the recent hiring of long-term TNA employee Jeremy Borash and Jarrett. The just thinking out loud interference of that later Tibbetts is that J- Jeff could be a part of the team Hunter is said to be putting together when it come when and if it gains more control behind the scenes. Should be interesting to see how the ideas of Jeff Jarrett as a part of the brain trust meshes with tri- with the trips will save us narrative a lot of wrestling fans have when it comes to Darby's future. So putting this in easier perspective than I just read, um, it's basically being said that Kevin Nash and Scott Hall influenced Triple H to influence Darby to bring Jeff Jarrett in to get to the Hall of Fame, and Jeremy Borash had a, a bit to do with it, and that he's going to be brought in to be a creative mind with Triple H going forward and uh, his ideas going forward behind the scenes. Which I don't know if that's a really good idea. I think it's been working so I think it's been working well so far. Uh, I don't think it's going to be one of those situations where the wells run dry and Triple H can't really think of anything else to do. I think he's fine. So hopefully that's not true. And this again, like I said, it's an unknown source, so maybe. It's not completely true. I really hope it's not completely true, so take it with a grain of salt. I hope it is not. Um, Triple H is doing m- great work with NXT and so far 205 Live, so let's just keep Jeff Jarrett out of that. Um, as to when the deal came together, Jarrett himself told TMZ Sports he got a call in January. He doesn't specify when in the month he was asked, just that he accepted it immediately. Going to go ahead and keep the alleged qualifier on that the timeline, even though it comes from the man himself. The notion that is that this went down without more involvement from the legendary politicker is pretty unbelievable to me personally. And the man who tried, who once tried to get fans to buy into multi-level marketing scheme to help fund a promotion. So, 
again, uh, I don't know how, how this came to be. Again, this is all we got from the rumors of Jeff Jarrett into the Hall of Fame. Now, to get my perspective on it, I don't think – I think there's – I'm going to agree with the people who think that there's better people that deserve it more than Jeff Jarrett right now. I don't think this was the right time to bring Jeff Jarrett into the Hall of Fame. Um, there's a lot more people that deserve the Hall of Fame spot way more than Jeff Jarrett. Like, really, he was more of a, the – I remember more in WCW and TNA more than WWE, WWF back in the day. A lot of people do. Uh, and when you see their, his highlight package of the Double J, Jeff Jarrett, like, what was the biggest highlight? Uh, like, what was, what was the biggest highlight? Was the thing be- – it's weird. And then, actually, I have a uh, – I screenshotted someone uh, saying this on Twitter, and it actually made a lot of sense. Um, and I definitely agree with it. Just give me a second to pull up the screenshot. The most memorable moment to Jeff Jarrett's WWF career was losing the IC title to China. And yet, Jarrett is the one in the Hall of Fame and not China. So, explain to me how that works, right? It's it's one of those things where you're like, Ugh, you know what? Maybe it should have been China. Maybe this should have been the time they should have just done it. Again, like this, they're saying like maybe if China goes into the Hall of Fame, it's going to create too much controversy. Well, look what you did. You put Jeff Jarrett in the Hall of Fame. Now you're freaking getting everyone up in a bunch and saying, okay, these people deserve to be over Jeff Jarrett. And I agree with them. Okay, I don't. To me, Jeff Jarrett, I don't think has done anything in the WWE enough to deserve a spot in the Hall of Fame. So that's my opinion. I want to know your guys' opinion out there on what uh, this whole Jeff Jarrett thing is and going through your minds and if he deserves to have a Hall of Fame spot. So let me know on Twitter or in the YouTube comments down below. Uh, Next bit of news. Who is the mastermind behind the gauntlet match this week on Raw and whose decision was it? This is very interesting. On Monday Night Raw this week, fans saw something that we don't see often. that That would be straight wrestling for two hours of the show. These participants in the men's elimination chamber faced off in a gauntlet match on Raw. This took up the entire first two hours of the show. Um, and I read that, I'm pretty sure I read that there are only three matches happened on Raw this week. And the last time that happened was like back in 2006 or 2005. Like it was a long time ago. So that's very interesting. Uh, so who's responsible for making this happen? Uh, Mike Johnson of the PW Insiders reporting that the person behind the gauntlet match was none other then Vince McMahon himself. Really? That is shocking. I'm act- If Vince was behind this, I'm actually shocked that, excuse me, Roman Reigns didn't win this match. It looked strong going into the Elimination Chamber. But I liked it. It was an interesting idea. It was something we don't see at all on WWE television nowadays. So I, it's a definitely a different direction. It's been coming from Vince. I don't know. That's uh, it's very, very different from him, man. He's it's like he's he's going with what the direction it should be, and then there's sometimes he's reverting back to the '80s style and too many promos and too much garbage. So we'll see what we'll see we'll see. I mean, it, this could not be true. This could be someone else who made the decision. This guy's just saying, oh, it's Vince McMahon just to get you know get a boost behind him. Uh, this apparently surprised some people backstage because Vince suggested it out of nowhere. He, d- he is traditionally said to be not very high on these types of matches either. So this is what I mean. Like, is it actually Vince McMahon? Or is this someone, or is this Vince making, or maybe maybe it's Vince secretly leaking it in to the dirt sheets so that he, people, like, rethink their thoughts on Vince McMahon. Like, you, know, you know what I mean? I, I wouldn't doubt that he would try something like that, a little snake. So I, I'm, I'm probably going to go with that. <laughs> you guys let me know. Um, the match was reportedly laid out on, and Vince approved the length and presentation of the show. See, that's hard to believe. It's getting it's getting hard to believe as the article goes on here. Uh, there were some fans thinking that this had to be Triple H call since it was so different from what we usually see. See, I would go with Triple H. Um, I, I definitely probably wouldn't have guessed Vince McMahon at all. It is a surprise factor if it is Vince McMahon, but I would so vote on Triple H. Maybe Vince was taking a vacation on Monday, and then you know he kind of left Triple H in charge for the show for one day, and actually produce something really good. I, I really don't believe that Vince approved this and have Seth Rollins last an hour and beat John Cena and Roman in the same match. Are you going to honestly sit here and believe that Vince McMahon approved that? I To me, it's like, no. I know, and a lot of people are going to say, oh, he's not going to push Roman Reigns every day. I mean, yeah, he will. He will. They've been pushing Roman Reigns so far down our throats more than, more than ever in the last year. So I wouldn't have doubt If this was Vince McMahon, he would have had Roman win the match. It would have been Roman knocked out, and then he would have came back, and then had one Superman punch, one spear, and no kick out. Guarantee. I think this was Triple H. I'm going to go with that direction. Again, you guys let me know out there. Uh, bad news for fans of Bloody Pile Drivers. Got some more news here. So if you're into Bloody Pile Drivers, got some bad news for you. This article's hilarious, so bear with me. 
Um, there have been talk on the Twitter machine, largely amount among the independent wrestlers and their fans, of things to consider if you're traveling to New Orleans to work WrestleMania week in a in and around April 8th, which myself and Corporate Cap are going to. We're very excited for that. Um, for the most part, they, these are good things like needing blood work to prove wrestlers are not uh, performing with hepatitis or HIV. But the Louisiana Boxing and Wrestling Commission, which oversees pro wrestling in the state, has several other rules and regulation and regulations. Uh, promoters and fans might not be consider so promoters wrestling wrestlers and fans might not or might have to consider. Um, John Pollock of Post Wrestling spoke with the member of the commission recently and got more details. So here are the details of what's not allowed in New Orleans that weekend. Blood and pile drivers are banned during matches. So that sucks for more of the indie promotions rather than WWE because WWE likes to stay away from blood. Uh, if they, whatever they can, and pile drivers are basically banned from the WWE except for Undertaker's. This is weird because I don't know if Undertaker does come back for a WrestleMania match, are they gonna swerve around that and let him do the Tombstone pile driver? Because I don't know how you else you end a match with him. If he's gonna face Cena, he's not gonna make Cena tap out, and he's not gonna win by choke slam or last ride. I highly doubt that. Um, so we'll see what happens with that if Undertaker does wrestle and how they get around with that pile driver. Um, promoters need a license from the state. But a visiting organization can borrow one from a from a local federation. Interesting. Uh, the promotions the promotion has to have blood work from each of their performer on their show from sometime in the last six months, proving that they're HIV negative and hepatitis B and C negative. This paperwork has to be presented to a commission official on the day of the show, which is good. I mean, just in case there is blood and, and, and something does happen, you know, or something could happen in wrestling. This is actually really good. I hope that they do something like that just to protect the uh, wrestlers from each other and getting, you know, it would suck that someone would get a disease from another wrestler and then, you know, that's the end of their career. Um, every wrestler has to purchase a $25 license to work in the state, which that's, that's different. I wonder if WWE kind of covers that cost. Like, a, WWE, like a corporation like WWE, I figure they'd cover that cost. Uh, as for the indie wrestlers, that sucks. they got to probably pay out of their own pocket for that. I mean, it's only $25, but, hey, they got to buy one to work in the state. Uh, the commission provides an official and EMT at every show. The officials can require talent to take a ringside physical if they need to. Virginia Mahal, careful, man. If they're going to be taking ringside physicals, I wouldn't even come to New Orleans. Just saying, bro. You know, might want to might want to clear uh, clear your uh, clear your system out before you come over to New Orleans. Just going to leave that out there. Number five, Vel- or number five, fifth bit of news on the show: <laughs> the Velveteen Dream shoots on indie, quote unquote, indie wrestlers. Uh, shoot your shoot, Velveteen Dream. Sometimes a man just has to express himself via a shoot promo on social media. One of the pleasant surprises of NXT in 2017 was watching the rise of the Velveteen Dream. Dream Dream's rivalry was with Alistair Black was one of the uh, Dream's rivalry with Alistair Black was one of the best of last year, and the 22-year-old is picking up right where he left off today. Uh, or actually, this was yesterday. Dream took to social media to get something off his chest. Um, it takes a brave man to begin a shoot promo with "If I can shoot for a minute," and that's what he said at the beginning of his promo. He said, "If I can shoot for a minute." for a minute and he wrote this in uh, uh, like an iPhone note page. He says, I'm beyond irritated by the indie guys coming into NXT and taking up spots, uh, living out our dream or uh, living out their dreams and pretending to be actual talent or as we put it, superstars. I'm home. Gr- I'm a homegrown talent and I breed success on my own terms. Reactions prove it. Facts are facts. If anyone under contract has an issue with it, the dream is easy to find. Hashtag. Fabe that. Wow. That's uh, an interesting shoot there by Velveteen Dream. Um, If there is any justice in pro wrestling world, Dream will begin his next televised promo with the phrase, if I can shoot. Um, With NXT signing quite a few indie guys over the past few months, Dream has no shortage of potential feuds to keep him busy. Um, Is this going to be like the Lance Storm thing where every time he gets on the mic, he says, if I can shoot for a minute, there's like when Lance Storm used to be like, can I be serious for a minute? If they do this with Valentine Dream, I hope they don't because that's kind of like stealing something that's not really his own. I they have to continue with what they're doing with Velveteen Dream. He's doing much more success on his own right now. Um, but this is an interesting shoot there. I don't know if that's a work or if this is actually him being pissed off. Um, I think it's probably going to be a work. Uh, I think he's going to be facing and feuding with a indie wrestler. 
I'm, it could be Ricochet, uh, EC3 maybe. I'm guessing, I'm hoping it's EC, EC3. I want an EC3 Velveteen Dream feud. So I think this is just the beginning of this, and we're probably going to get it shown on NXT next week. So um, we'll see what happens. Um, Wade, Next bit of news, Wade Barrett on how there to be transfers reactions. Hmm, interesting. Uh, there's a long, there's a long, that's, I can't even read that. <laughs> There's long been a belief within the community that Darby doesn't like it when a performer gets over on their own. Examples have included Zack Ryder during the initial run of his True Long Island Story YouTube show and Way Barrett's Bad News gimmick, which started on the JBL and Cole show. A Darby series, a, a bite one like the has a bite one that likely wasn't being run by Vince McMahon's main creative team. I got to reread these articles when I post them because this morning I was in a little bit of a rush. I probably should have reread them and reword stuff because I can't even read half these words right now. Um, maybe I need another coffee. But anyway, let's continue with the article. In Barrett's case, the popular act went nowhere. Eventually, it was ditched from the King of the Ring crown before the former NXT winner and Nexus leader bounced around a few stables and partnerships until his release in the summer of 2015. So... Wade, now working as an authority figure for the British in I, British indie defiant under his real name, Stu Bennett, would be a good person to talk to about there to be cutting the legs out from under acts who become popular without the company's help. That's what the UK website Sports Bible did. Um, so, again, a lot of stuff you got to take with a grain of salt. I'm not a news source. Just take it with a grain of salt. I'll give you guys my opinion after. Um, this is what he told them. And what he told them sounds frustrating for performers who find themselves in a position uh, he did during the bad news run, but is also a pretty understandable way for a multi-million dollar entertainment enterprise to operate. This is a quote from Ray Barrett. The WWE misu- misuses a lot of guys. There's a lot of guys you could do more with, but at the end of the day, they pick up the guys they want to and go with it and go with them. Um, I don't think they sh- purposely sabotage. I think there's a limit. Uh, there are limited spots to be at the top of the card or the highlighted guys. There are probably seven or eight guys where it's like, okay, these are our main these are our main guys going forward for the next six to twelve months, and they need to be the guys getting the biggest reactions, being involved in the biggest storylines and stuff like that. Um, so that is very interesting. Uh, I think I think it's we we can't really take this seriously. We have to take it with a grain of salt because we don't know if that's actually how WWE thinks. They might. I mean, it, it kind of proves itself. You look at television nowadays. Like they have guys like like uh, uh, let me see, Ty Dillinger of all people. I'm not trying to be biased here, but guy's got a very very old gimmick, and they really just buried him. And then you have come out with a report saying that they don't want the tr- crowd to chant ten. They don't want him to be over. It's just it's it's really weird how this article kind of makes sense, and then you kind of feel like oh we don't really know if this is true. Um, so if there's a guy who is bigger or is getting bigger reactions than them, then I think there is an attempt to, I'm sure, make the reaction transfer onto the other guys they are going with, the guys they want to push. There are just a limited number of spots. That's the issue. You can't have everyone in those spots. Uh, choosing certain performers to focus on is a logical starting point. It's the debate whether McMahon and his team know when to move on from uh, pushing one of their highlighted guys when they're not getting the hoped uh, when they're not getting hope for hope, the response they're hoping for, uh, or if they have been too stubborn to nurture the positive reaction a man or woman they didn't pick for the top spot and starts getting on their own. So basically what it's saying that um, they get pissed off when the guy that they want over is not getting over. Well, then you got to go with the guys that are getting over. I mean, in that case, like you guys got to like, they, they, anything they need to learn to start going with more guys that are completely over because that's what's going to make you money. You look at, example, Rusev Day, who's completely over right now, who's selling shit ton of merch and making the company money, but they choose not to push him, which is very, very weird. Did They choose to push Randy Orton and Jinder Mahal for whatever reason in, in the U.S. title feud and keep Bobby Roode a babyface, which is a complete cringe. So, again, they, they, they need to rethink their creative decision because the money is there. They just choose not to go for it, which is weird because they're in the business of making money. That is the number one thing with the Derby. They want to make money, and then they want to entertain us second. So why not do both in the same instant, entertain us while making money, more money at the same time with the guys that should be over and the guys we want to be over rather than who you want to be over and then not working and then getting 
frustrated on why it's not happening and transferring heat or transferring cheers to another guy somehow in, in ways that just doesn't make sense storyline wise or creative wise. So that's the main problem, and they need to figure that out. So that is what that is, and that's my opinion on it. Um, next bit of news, I think it's the last bit of news. Yep, update on Ronda Rousey. The Elimination Chamber pay-per-view on Sunday will feature a segment where Ronda Rousey will be signing her official Raw contract. Rousey was last seen at the Royal Rumble and hasn't appeared on any show since, so we have an update on that. According to Mike Johnson of the PW Insider, Ronda has officially completed her filming commitments in Columbia. She was working on the film Mile 22. Johnson says that Rousey was at the Performance Center on Monday and Tuesday this past week to prepare for her WWE run. On Wednesday, Ronda was in Stamford, Connecticut. This is where WWE headquarters is located. This is only speculation, but it seems like we'll be seeing a lot more of Ronda over the next several weeks leading to WrestleMania 34. She is expected to have a big match at the event and will likely appear in every episode of Raw going forward to build her match. And I think they should. I think maybe if you're going to do something big with Ronda Rousey here, you need to feature her on Raw going forward. She's done her prior commitments with the filming. You need to keep featuring her on Raw. If she's going to be a big part of this, this, this division and not just here to promote Steph, then you got to feature her more leading up to WrestleMania 34. She can be seen on those shows, so they got to do something. I hope they do something big. We're probably going to get the actual start to that feud this Sunday at the Elimination Chamber and see what exactly is going to happen at WrestleMania for Ronda Rousey. That's all the news I got for today, guys. Um, again, stick to part two tomorrow. I'm hoping to have a big, big story for the main heading. As for this episode, it's just a bunch of news put together. Um, I'll just go through the uh, advertising one more time, guys. Uh, if you're watching the video version of the podcast, you can look at the screen now. WrestleRumble.com. Go check them out, guys. They're a pick contest website. They got an Elimination Chamber uh, pick them this Sunday as well. WrestleRumble.com or on Twitter at WrestleRumble. Um, again, Elimination Chamber pick them this Sunday. Guys, go enter it in. As little as $10 gets you one entry. Or if you're feeling less confident, you can buy more entries. First place gets $500. Second place, $100 in a shirt from Collar and Elbow. Third to fifth place, $100. And sixth to tenth place, $25 to Pro Wrestling Tees. That's basically getting a free T-shirt. And again, uh, collar and elbow, t- or call, collar and elbow. I was gonna say collar and elbow tie up because that's usually what it's called. But the wrestling brand, they have a fantastic wrestling brand of clothing, guys. They're very, very comfortable. I'm told their sweaters are really comfortable. And I got a promo code for you. Just use the promo code Jumbo. Thanks to our pal Jumbo Ref One Two Three on Twitter. He, you can save ten percent on your order on checkout and again lastly but not least extreme wrestling shirts com specializing in pro wrestling and mma apparel with over fifty thousand t-shirts sweatshirts costumes dvds and pendants all in stock and the best part is it's free shipping to usa and canada so go check that out guys and support extreme wrestling shirts and all those brands wrestle rumble collar and elbow uh that would be greatly appreciated so Guys, that is going to wrap it up, I think, for episode number nine, part number one of Dirt to Be Headlines right here at No Holds Barred Wrestling Podcast. Your Canadian wrestling podcast that talks about the Dirt to Be and No Holds Barred on anything we say, pun intended. Again, you can follow the podcast on Twitter at No Holds Barred WP. You can follow myself at Real Kyle Masters, and you can follow my co host at Corporate Cappy. You can follow us on Instagram, No Holds Barred WP. If you want to listen to us on the go, Spreaker, iTunes, and Stitcher Radio is where you can find us. Spreaker is a glorious podcast app available for all apple and android devices it's free to download free to make a profile and you can listen to all previous episodes of the podcast and chat with us live on the air and if you want to watch any video versions of the podcast youtube.com slash nhbwr hit that subscribe button that bell icon for all upload updates and you can watch only all unboxings 2k content and all video versions of the podcast i am your host as always the self-proclaimed greatest host and i will see you next time